So guys, we are back and today we're going to be adding small copper heat sinks to the Bitax Gamma and all the other Bitaxes, but we're going to try it on the Gamma first. So we're currently benchmarking this one just for what it is at now and we'll get the results for that. And then we're going to go through and show you all the placements where I'm going to be putting the copper heat sinks on this, I benchmark it again and see if it makes a difference. So we do have those original heat sinks that we replaced. If you want to learn how to benchmark it, we do have a video on the channel. It was about two videos ago and it teaches you how to benchmark for the best overclocks. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to benchmark this first and then we're going to add copper heat sinks on the back. So firstly, we need to take it off after the benchmark is done and then we'll add the copper heat sinks. As I said, we're going to go through pretty much all the best placements that I've found on the internet and kind of where the heat is coming from actually on the board because you need some on the back as well. But currently I think it's gonna be around this range here and on the back it's gonna be around here in this region. So uh, near the voltage regulator as well. So let's benchmark this first. Let's get some results on the computer and then we'll take it off the rig, add our copper heat sinks and see where the best placement is for these on the bit axe and then we'll benchmark it again show you the results and maybe in a couple more videos we'll experiment with these two placing the heat sinks in different places so we've got a bunch of little copper heat sinks that you'll see soon in the video coming up so stick around for that and let's go over to the computer to check out the benchmark for this running currently so here we have it after benchmarking this is kind of what we're looking at in terms of the hash rate so expected 1.53 Currently we did run the benchmark and this is what we have overall. So we got up to, just so we're making sure that we do it right when we go over to the next benchmark with the heat sinks on, you can see at the top right here, we started with a voltage of 1150 and a frequency of 625 and we went down the whole list all the way up to when it stopped, which is right here. And the only reason it stopped is because the VR temperature got too high. So there is limits on the VR temperature and that's mainly what we're trying to decrease with kind of these copper heat sinks so that we can let this go a little bit further without running this too high because I believe that the voltage regulator is rated up to maybe 115 or a little bit higher than that but you shouldn't let it go too high necessarily. So we're trying to put a lot of heat sinks around it or at least on it to dissipate some of the heat so they can run more overclocks and get a better benchmark feature. But we ended out with our highest hash rate settings here. So keep this in mind, top five was rank one for top five highest hash rate is core voltage 1150 and frequency 750 and an average hash rate around 1489 giga hash and average temperature is around 56 degrees efficiency is 15.84 and VR temperature at 88 degrees. So this was actually back here. It didn't count this one because the VR temperature got too high and we have a limit set for 94 for it to cut off. But it was mainly this overclock setting that is the best. And then we don't really want the efficiency one, but we'll just show it here. Best efficiency is 14.48 and that is with a core voltage of 115 and frequency of 625. Giga hash was 1332. So now that we've benchmarked it, we can actually move on to taking it off and we're gonna show you basically what I think at least is the best placement. So we're gonna go through this here just quickly so I can show you. There is some pictures out there. There's a lot of information out there on Reddit as well and on the OSMU Discord about where to place the heat sinks. So mainly right here, a lot of people do tend to place that and that's behind the chip, as you can see by here, but I've seen that that doesn't really make much of a difference. So the main thing you wanna put it on is this by here, which is I think the voltage regulator. So the main thing you wanna put it on is back behind in this area. So it looks like these chips are supposed to be covered at least, and then you have the voltage, I believe that this is the voltage regulator. And I don't know what's underneath this because it already has a heat sink on it. But by here, I also think that on the front, 
So imagine that this is flipped around. I want to put one right here as well, just to dissipate some of the heat. Also, this power supply, or at least the socket, gets very hot as well. So we might try to put some around there. We have got quite a lot of them, so we can test out a bunch of different ones. And we're going to put some onto the Supra and onto the Max in later videos. But currently, we're going to kind of go with this configuration that we're seeing here. So on these chips on the back, on the voltage regulator, and on whatever's underneath there. And hopefully we can decrease the voltage regulator temperature and some of the board temperature overall, which in turn can get us to higher overclocks. I'm not really expecting massive amounts. I'm expecting it maybe to go average hash rate around 1,600. That's what we're kind of going for. If there's anything above that, that would be great. But it's all about heat dissipation because the voltage regulator is the real thing that's cutting this out because it's getting too hot. And we even upped it. I think the standard was 84 degrees. And we actually allowed ours to go to 94 degrees. But you can see the temperature on the chip is around 57. So there's still a lot of headroom up to around 66 degrees that we can work with as long as we keep the voltage regulator lower in terms of the degrees by there. So let's take it off the rig and let's start showing you guys kind of where I would put all of the heat sinks. And then we're going to go and benchmark it again, and hopefully the results are better. So we're going to take a screenshot of this and then compare it afterwards. So let's go and put the copper heat sinks on now. So here we have the bit axe right here, and we have our copper heat sinks right here. So we've got a bunch of different sizes. You can see this small copper shiv as well that they've included. So there's varying sizes. I think we have this one and then it would be this one and then maybe this one which is three by three and i think there's a i think that's it in terms of the sizes of things and then we have this little copper shiv here that we can use as well so these are the four options and we have a bunch more that we can use as i said i'm thinking of putting one here because there's a lot of heat around this range and then there is a lot of heat on this power supply as well and maybe one on there but i've been advised that we're going to put one basically on there on this little black thing by if we just let this rest here so here are the options we're going to go here here and across these four pins or whatever they are capacitors there maybe by there as well on these two and i think that should be sufficient as i said in the video a lot of people do recommend putting them there but i don't think it actually makes a difference i've been told it doesn't necessarily make a difference the main thing is definitely on the voltage regulator and around this part of the bit axe so all we have to do is just peel off this blue thing and stick it on i'm thinking of going for the biggest one onto here and then trying to fit something around by there and then a long one across here so maybe this one by there that's gonna fit maybe or we could have this smaller one because we have a bunch of smaller ones that we could just fit on each individual one maybe a small two or three on there as well so i'm going to do some configuration on that find out which way is the best way and i'll let you know and we're obviously going to put one around this range as well because that is technically the front of it so we should dissipate some heat by there as well and i have seen people put it on here so let me know in the comments if it's useful to put it on this i don't actually know what this is necessarily so somebody let me know kind of what all the components i'm looking at are i'm not an expert in these things but that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to load it up with heat sinks, basically, and hope to dissipate a lot of heat out of the board. So I'm going to go and place them on, and then we'll get back and I'll show you the placements that we have already. And let's see if we make any alterations as well. So here we have the finished placements, and let's just go through them all here. So first one or two is going to be these two here. Uh, that was just a perfect size to put it on 
this thing on the bottom and we put one near kind of the back of where the voltage regulator is so hopefully that's going to dissipate some heat through the front as well i didn't really decide on putting anything necessarily hold on by here just because i didn't feel like it was necessary and i might actually put one on the back if we can do that just dissipate some heat and then if we look at the back you can kind of see what we have going on here we might need to fix that up a little bit but you can see there's one here on those ones covering there's one small one here and one big one here please let me know in the comments if any of these placements are kind of wrong or what you guys would do necessarily because i can always go in rip them off and change them but it looks like this was kind of the optimal placement i don't know if there can be overlap or if that's going to cause more heat issues if it's an overlap there or an overlap on hold on let me get it to focus these pins right there so hopefully there is no overlap but we shall see let's get it hooked up and let's start actually benchmarking it and we'll come back when we've benchmarked the whole thing we are going to start the benchmarks at a higher frequency just because i know that it can handle it up so we're going to start at i think six seven five and then go from there and monitor it hopefully this actually works out and it does actually help and i'll let you know the results so Let's benchmark it and let's get on to the results. So here we are back on the computer screen and we finished the benchmark or at least it's cut out on a benchmark that we're currently running. And right here we have them. So we started, if we go up here, we started at 1, 1 50, 6, 7, 5, And the earliest one that we started with was 1, 1 50, 6, 2, 5 for the previous benchmark, but we decided just to up it to 675 currently on the first go around, just because we know it can get up to there. And it's closer to that cutout point, so we wanted to see if we would be able to be pushed past the cutout point in our last one. If we open up our results here, we could get up the actual saved file, but you can just see the rank one that we had here. And the core voltage was 1150 and 750 on the frequency and average hash rate was 1489 so we've kind of already showed you that an average temperature was 55.99 i don't expect the average temperature to decrease i expect the average vr temperature to decrease so that's the main thing that i was trying to keep cool the chip doesn't really matter it's the voltage regulator that really ups in terms of the temperature way quicker than the chip actually does and so that's why we started it at this range but you can see it did cut out at this range i believe so the first time around that we benchmarked it without the heat sinks it cut out at frequency 750 and voltage 1150 and if we scroll down here you can see that we actually did a full test on that and the vr temperature was around 86 degrees whereas by here it was 88.47 so there's already a slight decrease in the temperatures of the voltage regulator chip temperature is basically the same though so 56 degrees and if we scroll down right here we did another benchmark so it went through a full another round of benchmarking on 1170 and 725 voltage regulator temperature was 86 on that one as well and we went through a full another benchmark which is 1170 750 and Voltage regulator was 89 degrees, as you can see there while it finished. Chip temperature was 58. And then we did another full cycle that we're seeing here at 775 on the frequency and voltage regulator temperature basically cut out at that point up to 94 degrees, which was our cutoff point. But the chip temperature was around 60 degrees as well. So you can see there it says voltage regulator temperature exceeded 94 degrees stopping current benchmarks. So it's definitely improved it. It's allowed it to go that extra bit further. As we can see, we've gone from 1150 on the voltage and frequency 750 all the way up to 1170 on the voltage and 775 on the frequency. Now, when we go down to our rank one here, let's just move these across so we can kind of see it in the same page right here. And let's just put this here. 
So I don't know how to zoom in on Windows PowerShell. If anyone can let me know, that'd be great. You can see our rank one that we have is core voltage, 1170, frequency 75, average hash rate 1616 giga hash. So as I said at the start, I was kind of expecting around this range, which is very, very good. The efficiency is slightly worse. Temperature 60 degrees on the chip is around 56 there at that frequency and voltage and VR temperature 92 degrees. So definitely some improvements. We've allowed it to kind of gain around 130 to 140 giga hash more just by adding these on. It's a slight increase that you can do for your rigs, I guess. And obviously I don't know where the perfect place is to actually put them, but I'm assuming that that was kind of the right place. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll try and make some adjustments. If we just go down to the most efficient ones, you can see here, most efficient is at 1150, 700. So we've already kind of benchmarked that one. Here, temperature was only 78 degrees, which is really, really good. So the key thing about this benchmarking tool is it gives you kind of a benchmark that allows you to run your rigs without overdoing it. For example, you have this rank two where the VR temperature is very low, chip temperature is good, average hash rate is still good. It's nearly as good as the top one that we have here. So 1,489 and this one's 1,435 with just a way lower frequency. So you can basically extend the lifespan of the BitX with some of these benchmarking tools. So for anyone who wants to get these, I believe that I bought this one that is right here, this GeekPie 18 piece pure copper heat sinks. So it gives you 18 pieces, it's on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna go and get it, but I believe you can get it from pretty much any store here, even sells it on AliExpress and stuff like that. So that's mainly where I got them. If you guys have any recommendations for better ones that I could buy, and then we'll do kind of benchmarks on those, then we can always do that test as well. So we're trying to test everything that we can for the BitAx, just to give you guys way more information around everything. So you can make kind of an informed decision on how you're gonna overclock your BitAx or how you're gonna edit it and put on different accessories. This has definitely shown a difference. So the good thing about it is that it actually is making a difference. You can see that we've been able to push it just a little further. And that's only around $15 worth of stuff that you have to buy and Realistically, we only used four or five heat sinks out of the 18 pieces that you get. If you divide it up, you probably spend around three or four dollars just to get an extra 140 giga hash. And it's all kind of up to you if you actually want to do it. But it definitely does improve. Firstly, the VR temperature, the chip temperature, I think it slightly improves it just by taking some of the heat away from the board, at least. And it's definitely going to extend the lifespan of your miner as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have any of these heat sinks stuck on and kind of what results you got. If not, as I said, let me know if there's better heat sinks and we'll try test them out. If you want more content like this, make sure you like the video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.